Operation Shuja in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, started on November, on uh, the 30th of November 2021, when the combined Air Force, UPDF Air Force and uh, artillery shelled the four identified ADF ice cap camps, that is the Tondoli, Bell 1, Bell 2, and the Camp Yayua. Uh, it followed uh, on uh, 1st of December, it followed the ground forces when they crossed Bobandi Nobil border point, uh, which entered into the Democratic Republic of Congo up to a place called uh, Mokakati where the forces uh, established the forward operating base. Uh, the stopover at Mukakati uh, was because of uh, the poor roads. The poor road uh, from Mukakati up to River Samuliki Bridge was uh, so bad that it could not uh, allow uh, vehicles uh, to move, more especially uh, the, the, the heavy vehicles. So uh, the camping at uh, Mukakati enabled our engineers to open the road and also it allowed us to conduct civil military cooperation uh, to sensitize the communities in Congo to, to let them know that we, we came in to, 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 to bring peace and uh, to fight uh, the enemy that has been disturbing uh, the two countries. ADF has been uh, terrorizing both uh, Democratic of Congo, Eastern Democratic of Congo, and al also Uganda. And also, we wanted also uh, them, the, the civilians, to know that uh, they have to be part and partial of this operation uh, because we expected the enemy to infiltrate to come within the communities and uh, and uh, hide from there. So what uh, was done was to inform that uh, whenever you see any suspicious person, please report immediately to the authorities. Uh, we will come and uh, pick him or her. Uh, also, the intention was uh, uh, to make them know that we have come to cause some change and also to bring some quick impact projects like we opened up the the, the water points uh, where you find that uh, in, 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 in in Congo uh, those parts uh, do not have uh, drinking water uh, do not have uh, any wood, uh, water points so we had to open up water points uh, the road was uh, to be constructed that will enable trade uh, between uh, from uh, Nobil Bota Point or Bundibujo up to up to Beni. Uh, secondly, we also uh, allowed civilians to come to our medical centers. We had established uh, a medical center at Mukakati. Uh, forward operating base uh, where people were accessing uh, medical treatment. Uh, thirdly, we also uh, had protected, they secured uh, their, their, their life and the property because since then the enemy has never disturbed them. And from the, 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 the testimonies of uh, the, the 190 up to today, uh, when, whenever uh, Christmas time would come, uh, ADF would, would harass and uh, terrorize uh, uh, the surroundings, uh, the communities around. But uh, for the time that we, we, uh, we, we established the Mukakati uh, forward operating base up to today, 
there has not been any enemy incursion uh, in those communities. So uh, civilians are really appreciative of our intervention. Uh, from uh, Mukakati, the forces stayed there for 11 days. So on the 12th, uh, when the engineers finished with the opening up the road up to uh, River Samalik, uh, River Samalik Bridge, uh, the ground forces moved up to River Samalik, uh, River Samalik Bridge and established uh, another base uh, which would uh, allow the ground forces to spring into the, the Virunga forest, into the Virunga impenetrable forest. So the forces moved, the joint forces, that is the, the combined uh, FRDC, uh, the armies of Congo and Uganda, UPDF, entered into uh, the Virunga forest to the, to the first objective, that is the uh, Kambi Yayua. Uh, the movement of the assault force, the combined assault force, uh, discovered many smaller and larger camps as they were advancing to, to, towards the camp Yayua, uh, which took uh, around uh, 12 days to reach uh, camp Yayua. And uh, on the 24th of December, that's when the combined forces captured the much revered, the much known uh, Camp Yayua, that was a stronghold of ADF, accommodated uh, the, the families. Uh, Camp Yayua covers eight acres of Virunga forest land. And uh, when you look at the, 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 the well uh, crafted structures, and uh, well cleared, uh, the ground uh, ground was uh, well cleared. It indicated that there could have been the most uh, the most uh, valuable target. That is the, maybe the the, 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 what, the the commander who used also to to to, to reside over there uh, because there was a command post and. Uh, and uh, so many structures that indicated that uh, commanders uh, were also around. And uh, the documents that uh, were also uh, recovered showed that uh, that was the camp which used to, 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 to train in the military training and also radicalization, uh, the Islamic radicalization. Uh, because uh, the documents really showed uh, the Arabic uh, inscriptions and also writings, and also the documents also revealed uh, the strength, the strength of uh, that camp, whose occupants numbered 624. So all in all, uh, Camp Yayua was the most stronghold of uh, of ADF who now have moved to areas like Boga, Eringeti and the other places of uh, of uh, Ituri Ituri province but we are to follow them wherever they will go we have to follow them and uproot them from their safe havens Right now we are receiving an average of about 120 to 150 patients on a daily basis. Of those right now, 30% are already civilians and uh, they usually come about, the, the peak hours are usually mid-morning to around uh, evening, evening hours. Um, we are still receiving um, a short influx of patients because uh, we, uh, we, 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 most, most of the civilians have not yet got that, that information that we're here also with medical services. But um, the number we're treating right now, we're seeing an exponential increase as uh, the days go by 
because uh, th th those whom we treat go and uh, inform others back in the communities. Commonly, from the civilian population of the DRC, at the moment, we are seeing uh, hi the highest majority being respiratory tract infections, gastrointestinal infections, uh, commonly they are known as diarrheal diseases, they are characterized by vomiting, you know, abdominal pain, and malaria. Being uh, a, a densely forested area, malaria is very common here. And uh, right now we have, we, we have registered success with the civilians who have treated so far. Uh, all of them have recovered successfully. And uh, today we've started getting pediatric cases, the children. The, so the mothers have started, the civilian mothers have started coming in with their children for treatment. Yes, so we shall continue treating both the soldiers of UPDF, uh, FADAC, and any other soldiers whom, because this is a joint operation, any other soldiers whom we may be working with, as well as the civilians. So we're here for the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo and for the entire East African, East African community.